After debuting the iPad Pro with a 12.9 inch display way back in November 2015, Apple has now released a regular sized iPad Pro that looks and feels just like an iPad Air. If you're looking for something powerful and mobile to handle all the work and play you can throw at it, the 9.7 inch iPad Pro might be just what you're looking for. My name's Tim Brooks and today I'm trying to help you decide whether you need an iPad Pro in your life and which size is right for you. Despite first appearances, there's more than 3 inches separating the two tablets. The 9.7 inch iPad Pro looks and feels just like a regular iPad Air. In fact, it's identical in terms of size, dimensions and weight. Staring you straight in the face is the brand new True Tone display which delivers noticeably more vivid colours and improved contrast ratio. It also balances whites based on ambient light conditions, which is a subtle but surprisingly welcome feature, especially when you spend a lot of time typing against a white background. Under the hood, things are pretty much identical to the larger model. There's an A9X system on chip which is clocked slightly slower than the 12.9 inch model, but you'll never really notice. One thing you might notice at some point though is that the 9.7 inch iPad Pro only has 2 gigs of RAM, half that of its larger counterpart. This is on par with an iPad Air 2, which delivers an impressive multitasking experience, but I can't help but feel that in a few years you're going to wish Apple had delivered the full 4 gigs. Battery life is impressive at 10 hours, and continues to put my MacBook Pro to shame. While I'll get maybe 5 or 6 hours work done when using my laptop on battery, I'll still have half a tank left in the iPad Air at the end of the day. I left the iPad Pro in my bag for 5 days without touching it, and the battery had only reduced from 95-77%. to 77%. The 9.7 inch iPad Pro is considerably more portable than its counterpart, particularly when you pair it with the smart keyboard accessory. This however won't be for everyone. If you go for the smaller tablet, you're essentially choosing a couch buddy that can make work happen when out and about, rather than a work-focused machine with a bit more screen real estate and a better typing experience. Apple has added an iPhone 6 quality camera to the smaller iPad Pro to further differentiate the models. The lens now protrudes from the back and can capture 4K video at 30 frames, 1080p at 30 or 60 frames, 12 megapixel stills, and slow motion footage that's on par with the 6S. There's a true tone flash on the back, live photo support, and vastly improved low light performance. Even the front facing FaceTime camera has been upgraded to the 5 megapixel standard set by the 6S. So Apple has delivered a photographer's iPad, and while you may be wondering if encouraging people to shoot photo and video on their tablets is a good thing, the fact is that many people already do so. The iPad is a flexible device that can accomplish many tasks, why shouldn't it be an effective camera too? It makes a lot of sense to see these improvements on the smaller model, because it's far less unwieldy in the hand compared to the 12.9 inch one. A smaller screen means a smaller smart keyboard too. It still connects to the iPad via a connector on the back, requires no batteries, charging or Bluetooth pairing, and I still think it's one of the main reasons you should consider buying an iPad Pro. If you're not interested in first party accessories, the iPad Air 2 might be a wiser decision. Compared to the 12.9 inch accessory, the smaller smart keyboard takes some getting used to. Apple has been smart about reducing the size of the keys, keeping the letters relatively large while shrinking down keys like tab, apostrophe and backslash. Typing is still a cramped experience, but I have relatively large hands so users with smaller digits may have a better experience than I did. After about 30 minutes of typing, I felt far more at ease with the condensed layout, so practice makes perfect. I can't help but feel like the pencil stylus is far less useful here, unless you absolutely love handwritten notes. It might also work well as a portable graphics tablet for your Mac using an app like AstroPad, but for digital artists, designers and so on, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro makes more sense. Multitasking is also less useful this time round. The iOS split view feature allows you to use a secondary app that occupies one third or one half of the screen. When dividing the screen in two, apps have less real estate than you'd probably like, to the point where certain Safari websites revert to condensed mobile versions. Using a second app that only occupies one third of the screen is a much more pleasant experience. With this in mind, the 9.7 inch Pro feels more like an upgrade for iPad Air users who would like a tablet with a bit more grunt and compatibility with some very nice first party accessories. A 599 for a 9.7 inch iPad Pro, it's $200 more expensive than an iPad Air 2, but it does come with 32 rather than 16 gigs of storage. Chuck in a smart keyboard and you're looking at a total minimum cost of 748, which is still less than the cheapest MacBook Air at 899. Of course, a MacBook Air can do far more with a proper desktop operating system, but you might already have a main machine and would rather something a little more flexible, portable and fun. The 9.7 inch iPad Pro exists more as a supplementary bit of tech than an all out replacement for your laptop. While neither model can really replace your main machine, you might be surprised at just how productive iOS can be with the right apps and a proper keyboard. In terms of hardware and form factor, the 9.7 inch iPad Pro is probably the best iPad to date. 
Improvements like a full set of stereo speakers, a proper camera, plenty of power, and the best display we've ever seen on an Apple tablet make it a superior choice to the iPad Air 2. As a portable addition to your main setup, the 9.7 inch iPad Pro strikes a good balance between work and play. The 12.9 inch model is still worth considering if you're looking for something a little more work focused, with a bigger screen that doesn't deliver such a great sofa experience. The iPad Air 2 will save you $200, and it's more than powerful enough to handle anything on the App Store today. But the 9.7 inch iPad Pro offers the best of both worlds for those who can afford it. To read our full review and be in with a chance of winning an iPad Pro, head to makeuseof.com.